Now that you've learned the basics of coding in Scratch, we have a challenge for you. We want to build a program where we make a butterfly fly towards us. How would you go about it? Well, first of all, we need a butterfly. We will click on this icon here to choose a sprite. As you can see, there are lots to choose from. Let's scroll down a little bit. We'll choose Butterfly 2. Not Butterfly 1, but Butterfly 2. There's a reason for this. We click on it to select it. Oops, we've still got the cat. So let's get rid of it by selecting it here and clicking on this icon. Yes, good. Now that we've got our sprite on the stage, let's think a bit about what we wanted to do. We want the butterfly to fly towards us. Flying means moving, right? Let's make it move 30 steps. Oh, I might just zoom in here by clicking on this icon. Very good. And we said move 30 steps. So I'll change this and click to see what happens. Good. Now let's introduce the if on edge bounce block and test it to see if it works. Oops, I forgot to set the rotation style like we saw in the previous video. We'll click on the butterfly's direction and choose the middle option, just like we did earlier. Good. Now there's something I don't really like about this. This is not really how a butterfly moves, is it? What do butterflies do when they fly? They flap their wings. We can actually program this in Scratch. Let me show you something really cool. See this tab here, the Costumes tab? If you select it, you'll be able to see that there are two costumes for this butterfly. Nice, huh? Now, let's incorporate this in our program. We'll go back to the Code tab and we'll get a Next Costume block from Looks. So, go to Looks and get Next Costume, which is here. And now, we'll snap it at the end of our Code Stack, like this. Now let's run it to see if it works. Nice! But to be honest, I've been clicking a lot to make this code of stack run several times. If only there was something to save me from all this clicking. Well, luckily there is. I'd like to show you the control blocks, which are very, very handy. In fact, one could say that this is with, that it is with these blocks that the magic of programming and computer science comes to life. We'll grab a repeat block, which is the second block here, and get it in our code area, so that it looks like it's hugging our code stack. Like this. Now, if you did manage to get it to work like this, don't worry, I'll detach them. If you didn't manage to do this, you can just bring in your repeat block, leave it anywhere in the code area, and then drag in the stack of code. And you can do this by clicking on the first block in that stack. Drag and drop it inside repeat. Now let's click it to see if it works. Ooh, <laughs> that's a little bit too fast. Oh, I know, we can bring in a way block, this one here. I'll put it right after next costume, here. Let's test it again. Hmm, I'd say perhaps a bit too slow now. How can we fix this? By making the butterfly wait for a shorter time. Now, I'm not really sure what might be the right solution how long it should wait. So I'll just try something and see how it goes. I'll go for 0 
so half a second. And I'll test it. Hmm, much better. Okay, so we got to program but a butterfly so it looks like it's flying. But we wanted to make it look like it's flying towards us. How can we do that? What happens to the looks of an object that is coming towards us? It looks like it's getting bigger. Let's try that. There is a block in looks that says change size by, down here. We're not going to take this set size to, but change size by. We'll plug it right before the weight block. Let's try it again. Amazing! We've programmed a butterfly to fly towards us. We'll now bring in the green flag from events to tell Scratch when our program is starting. I think it would also be great to bring a backdrop for a butterfly. We can change backdrop by clicking on this icon here on the bottom right. Again, there are many to choose from. I think I'll just go for blue sky. Excellent. One final test. Ooh, it's getting closer. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to get the butterfly back to its original size, you could click on looks and set size to, oops, I'm on backdrops. See here, I've got backdrop selected. I need to select my butterfly. There we go. So if you go to looks for the butterfly, you'll be able to find the set size to. And just by clicking set size to 100, brings it to its original size. Yeah, much better. <laughs> Before you go ahead and build your own games and animations in Scratch, I'd like to highlight a few things. First, when you work on your projects, it's a good idea to break things down, like we did here. We said, for a butterfly to look like it's flying towards us, um, we must make it move. We, may, we must make it flap its wings and grow in size while moving. Second, you should always test your program when you're making changes. And if something is not working well, you can just fix it. This is actually something that professional programmers do all the time. Finally, it might not always be clear what the solution to a problem might be, or how to go about building part of your program. My advice would be to just start simple, and then keep building and keep extending it. Now off you go to build your own games and animations. <laughs>